Hello there and welcome to Be Water. It's Alara Varal here and today I'm going to be interviewing Wayne Karana, a mindfulness coach and also the founder of Mind Friend. He's going to be talking about how it's what it's like being a mindfulness coach, what it is he does, and how he built up his business to get to the stage it is at now. He's going he's given he's giving loads of tips and um, um for any other entrepreneurs that want to build up their own business and um really inspiring guy here. I think you should all meet him. <laughs> right, enjoy the interview. Bye. Hello. Uh, <laughs> hi, Alara. Pleasure to meet you. A pleasure to meet you too. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Very good. Very <laughs> good. It's a sunny day here in Malta. Oh, very beautiful. Warm. My my aunt lives in Malta and she's always so tanned. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself, how are you? Good, thank you. It's actually really lovely here in England as well, super sunny, so that's nice. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> very, very lucky with the weather these days. <laughs> so we uh, have Wayne here from Mind Friend. Um, hi Wayne, welcome. Could you please tell me about where you're based and uh, about your brand please? So about, can you tell me about Mind Friend um, and just introduce it to us? Yes, certainly, sir. Oh, I'm based in... Um, for it's in the EU, in the EU, for those who are me, and um, basically I'm here operating as a mindfulness coach uh, and a meditation coach. Um, I also I'm also studying to um, continue my studies uh, to become a therapist. And I am also, uh, I work also as a social worker, so quite, my mind friend uh, was uh, born out of mindfulness because mindfulness is about living in the present, paying attention, but without judgment to yourself and others and using that non-judgment or better yet compassion yeah. towards yourself and others. So mind friend, the concept, is, uh, the concept about mind friend is to be a friend to your own mind, to befriend your mind, yeah. to work with your mind rather than against it, um, and to help you through and um, cope with the challenges of life. Yeah, and and it's actually quite, it's much easier said than done, isn't it? Befriending yourself, because it's really, it's such a accepted thing now to just criticize yourself all the time, like hate yourself saying, hate this about myself, I always do this, I always do this. And it's actually a really different concept to just be like, I actually really like everything about myself and I'm gonna work with that. So what yes. what was it in your life that made you want to want to set up Mind Friend and work work with this kind of thing. What was the inspiration behind it? Did it was there a series of events that led to that? Yes, yes. Um, um, but basically, Ella, um, what happened to me is um, that since a very young age, um, sensitive to light surroundings, I've always been absorbing energies. And unfortunately, this created a lot of anxiety from a very young age. And I've I remember having a panic attack like at seven, eight years old. So uh, this anxiety carried on, carried on, carried on. And as I got older, it got worse and worse and worse. And I didn't know what was happening to me. And since then, I started my journey. I left my job. I went to university. I graduated in psychology. Then I got certified as a mindfulness teacher. And um, what really drives me is a place where they can learn how to cope with their emotions, how to cope with their thoughts, yeah. how to cope with their challenges in life, with relationships and conflicts. And these skills are not being taught anywhere. Uh, anywhere. No. And they ship us out of school and accept us, uh, you know, expect us, sorry, to, you know, just be successful and get, a, you know, and be great. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's not what happens. What happens is that most people find it very difficult and then they experience pain and suffering and setbacks and they think that it's their completely their fault. So what really drives me is to spread this awareness, to spread these skills. So adults and especially children, perhaps as well, they won't need to suffer as much as, as they might be suffering at this moment yeah. or they might need to suffer as much as I suffered or other people suffered. 
So that's what really drives me, you know, when someone yeah. opens up and you see them bloom, for me that makes the whole journey um, really worth it. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's amazing that you, you actually have made that your mission to allow the space for them to bloom as well, because a lot of the time it's just there's set things expected of people you know, you get a job, make good money, and it's very, it's very routine, and there's no space for being authentic and be, really being yourself. So, I think, I think what you do, it sounds like a bit like life coaching. Is it? Would you, would you call yourself a life coach? Um, yes, yes. Um, uh, I, I'm not officially a life coach, but, um, but the mindfulness coaching is basically exactly what I do. Yeah. Um, when I see individual clients. They come to me with a problem, and we explore what, what, uh, how they are reacting to these problems, what's coming up, what are the triggers. So then they can learn to observe those triggers, catch them um, uh, right up where they are beginning or earlier than before, and thus be able to change their behavior, thus be able to make a more conscious choice about yeah. what they would be doing. So if it's uh, maybe they want to feel less anxious, feel less stressed at work when they are with their partner or husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or when they are just um, trying something new and they just feel overwhelmed. It's all about uh, re acting rather than reacting, you know, taking yeah. a conscious response to it. And obviously, as you said earlier, it's not easy to work with these things because uh, everyone, including myself, we avoid pain and seek pleasure. Yeah. And to process these things, it takes a bit of discomfort and sometimes pain. But the only way out of pain is in. Yes. Is in it. Yeah. You know, and uh, no pain, no gain, sort of to speak. Yeah. And w what we resist persists. So if we don't resist it, it will not persist. Yeah. And I, c I can just see like... We might learn something from it and go off yeah, and I can see that you're kind of full of knowledge about this and you're you're just waiting to give it out to people. So you're like, look, I, I know how, how you can how you can be happy. Just listen to me. <laughs> and and that is that is what makes like you and your business attractive when when you're kind of like so overwhelmed with everything that you want to give out all the value that you want to give out that people are like, he has a lot. He has a lot to teach me. But um, I'm guessing it wasn't always like that. So when you were setting up your business, it wasn't it wasn't always just like, I know exactly what I'm talking about and everyone should listen to me. So what were the difficulties you faced when when you from when you first decided, OK, um, I think I want to make a business out of this to to what you're doing now. So when people come to you and actually, they actually want to pay money, what what did you find hard when setting the business up? And what do you find hard now now that it's now that it's up and running? Um, first of all, uh, just a bit of background, I've always been great with people, you know, and, uh, you know, you could put me in a room with a hundred people and uh, I'll do a session with 15 minutes preparation, you know, we'll definitely find something and, yeah. and I'll do it. But then there's the, the business side, the administrative, administrative side. And what, what I felt the toughest was in the beginning was that perhaps, and maybe some other people can relate. Uh, you know, where do I start or how do I start or what, what's the first step? And from experience, I realized that the first step is to just do it. So what do I mean? So I wanted to make a launch event because I had been teaching mindfulness for a few since last year, for a year already, but I hadn't been out there in the public officially. So I had to do a launch event. There was, you know, doubts, you know, these doubts and questions come up and, and fears as well. And whereas before they were holding me back, I said, no, now is the time. I'm just going to put the event page on Facebook or wh wherever you want to put it. And that put me into action mode. But the most the difficult thing is that, especially if you're doing them for the first time, is how, how you're going to do it, how, uh, uh, what, what is the method, what, what is the best method to go about it, uh, what is the professional way to go about it, all those questions. And the time as well, yeah. um, the time that you have to put into it, you know, whereas before I was just, you know, doing my jobs and, and you know, teaching here and there, I had to now market and I have to contact people and I have to do this and I have to 
get the venue and get the photographer and get that and get that. But all of these challenges were really, really, really tough, I have to admit. But what really helped me was research. So I went online and I was researching. And even more important to have, I found at least for myself, is to have some kind of mentors, some kind of yeah. coach, at least to just put you uh, on the right direction the right or give you a few tips here and there. And then you learn as you go along. Um, so that was the most difficult for me, like setting things up and, uh, and overcoming that fear, that fear perhaps of, of um, uh, you know, like being judged, you know, from, yeah. from, from a professional perspective. So that is something that I had to process as well. Yeah. And I'm guessing... And the... the, the, the the... Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say. I'm. Um, I uh, guess. Can you the question, cause it's... Yeah, it's got a bit funny. Um, so a lot of people that want to start up their own business. So you're saying that they need to get up and go. You just have to go, go, go and do it. But a lot of the time, they also have a financial problem as well. So, you know, that they to do all these events, they find it hard to maybe set up the event venue. So, do you do you have any way? What what ways did you get through your financial um, problems that you might have had? Of course. Um, something that I did myself, and I've heard it from many, many other successful entrepreneurs that, you know, post videos on Facebook and stuff. And they said, you, you don't need to start so big, you know. You can start small if you want to, if small is all you can afford it's okay to start that way and you know and build from there you don't need to go out all guns blazing um, obviously if you can if you have the means then invest yeah. but it's better to start small than actually of course for me you know at first it was like a one-man thing now if i'm if i want to open a shop business perhaps that's a different thing because i can do things online and i can give courses and workshops and corporate talks on my own but even if it's a shop, I still believe that you can, first of all, do all your homework. See if you can get e uh, some funding from the EU, for example. See if you can um, get, rather than getting a loan, see if you can find uh, some um, sort of venture capitalists or angel investors or even family members and to give them a share yeah. of your business, you know. and. Uh, these are and to get creative with the different ways you can get money in, yes, I guess. Yes, to be creative, but it's okay to start small. Even if you want to open a shop, you can open a big shop, a very big shop, you can. But maybe you can start small and then save, 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 and then you can expand. Yeah. And that is exactly what I'm doing, you know, I'm starting with small things, small groups. But then I, am, I intend to make it grow, I intend to enlarge the portfolio of courses that I'm offering. Um, make uh, different talks, different workshops. Um, so it's okay to start small, you know, even if you're recording a video and your business is, uh, you know, videos, you don't need a really expensive camera at first. You can just start with something and then as you go along, you improve. Yeah. That's how I see it. I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm not an expert in, in startup businesses, but that's how I, I, I experienced it myself, that it's okay to start. But it's the, the important thing is, is to, to get start, started, yeah. You know, because the action creates momentum, you know, it creates momentum. And maybe you'll feel down and, you know, I felt very, very, it was very, very tough. Like I felt down many times, really distraught, really, oh my God, what, what have I got myself into? But that momentum, you know, keeps going, okay, but now, okay, let, let me try this, let me try this. Yeah, and even momentum from, like, even when you feel down, that that feeling of, I can't do it anymore, something inside of you actually actually counteracts it, it goes, no, wait a minute, I, I actually can, and even the feeling down can it, induce momentum to keep make you keep going, I find, and failing teaches you stuff to, uh, how to, um, what not to do, and I think it's not always about succeeding, it's about, uh, observing why you failed and how uh, how you could you could not do that the next yes. time um yes so with uh with mind friend do you, is it still only you or do you employ other people in your company at the moment what stage are you at 
no, for, for now I'm uh, I'm on my own. <laughs> um, basically, um, I'm still starting. I basically started the process uh, all at the beginning of the year, and I launched um, in May. Yeah. So it's a very recent. Very thing. recent. But uh, since then, I've been um, I've completed. Uh, two uh, successful um, uh, mindfulness courses with two groups um, and another one is on the way and I've given, you know, I've also made some uh, pri oh, sort of private like private sessions even uh, last week I made a session with a group of uh, um, uh, addicts who are in rehab, it was very very interesting and I've also given talks uh, at HSBC um, at the Hilton, um, uh, you know, and, and, and other financial institutions who um, would like to train their employees or make them more aware that they can reduce their stress or they can manage it better and their anxiety and that they can take a pause during the day, just a minute or two, to recharge, refocus and thus, and thus being more productive. Yeah. So right now I'm on my own, but um, uh, the, the goal is to grow and I'm already collaborating with some other people to do retreats, to do some uh, you know online things. But at the moment I'm on a hundred stuff, you know. Yeah. You have to do the accountancy, you have to do the administration, Lots of stuff and this, to do. And this and that and that. But at the same time, I have to mention this. It's so tough but it's so incredibly growth producing. I mean, the growth that I'm feeling already since April, May, since I started organizing this, uh, you know, I've given up uh, some bad habits as well. I work out regularly. I read, I, uh, I read much more than before. I hear a lot of, you know, good things. Yeah. So whatever happens, whatever happens, whether you're on your own or anything, the growth is worth it, and with each uh, step that you grow, you will do things better. You will reassess, as you said, Alara. Um, you will reassess, and you will grow even more, and you will fine tune. You don't need to get everything right right away. Oh, if you do, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> or, or for the better, you know, that's great. But if you don't, then okay, what can I? Rather than saying, oh, look what happened, what can I do? Yeah. And then. Once, once, uh, what I'm, what I noticed is, once you have a solid foundation with yourself and with your system, that's when I feel perhaps I may not be right or, or I may, but that's when I feel that I can listen. Maybe I can get someone else on my team. Yes. Because now, I am capable of taking care of my own business myself. But now, okay, I need uh, an events manager. I need an organizer. I need a, an accountant or whatever. Yeah, and as you as you get bigger and bigger, I'm guessing you can you can afford to just focus on the the little section that you you're very good at. So like the speaking with clients, um, actually doing the face to face stuff, and you you can start employing people to do the accountancy and all that. But I think um, going through the learning curve of doing that all yourself and understanding how it works when it's when it's still at a small stage is actually really important before you get to the stage when you're really big and like delegate it to someone else because you've already gone through doing it yourself. But um. So you were speaking about, you know, you have to listen, listen really carefully for people. And I think in, in the industry you're in, where you're actually listening to what the, the problems of people and how they would, um, and trying to feel, you know, how uh, you can help them get through that. Um, listening is a really important skill that someone like you would have to have. What other skills do you think you have that you're proud you have that, that you think help you with being, being successful in what you do? Yes. Um, first of all, yes, listening. I mean, I've always been a good listener. People were always seeking me from even from me. And actually, uh, been through some struggles in the family, like health struggles, and um, uh, some members have some really, really difficult health and from I'm a natural empath, you know, I can empathize 
immediately with someone and I can be compassionate with someone. Uh, people are telling me <laughs> recently, like even when I do the guided meditations, that my voice also um, helps them to relax, you know, and I'm like, I yeah. So uh, that's true, good, good, uh, good for me, but and good for them. That's yeah. the important thing that, uh, that they can do. And I think also because of this inner fire, you know, I, I've always been very idealistic. Uh, I've always tried to help people and be there for them. Yeah. I can't stand someone who is in pain or is suffering needlessly. And even though I cannot save the world all at once, I can perhaps help or guide this better world because a person can only grow a better life, even if it's just one percent. Yeah. One percent better living is one percent less suffering. Yeah. So I've always felt that call, you know, and you know, I'm 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 a very positive guy by nature, you know, and I'm very kind as well to to, to people. That's very comes very natural to me, you know. If someone is distraught, you know, I give them a hug and. Uh, you know, I, I'm always, I like to be there for them, yeah. like to let them see their own potential. This is something, when I look into someone's eyes, I don't see the surface. I see what's beneath the potential for change, the potential for love, yeah. the potential for growth, for awareness, for success. Yeah. That's what I see in people. And that's lovely. It sounds like you can you can build a connection with someone really quickly, and that's what people like because yes. they they can feel that it's it's a heart to heart connection. It's not about it's not about anything any kind of back reason of like oh, I want to make money out of you or like any other reason. It's it's purely a very human uh, human nature to want to help someone, and they can feel that as well. So if um yes. for anyone that would want to um kind of come to mind friend what kind of could you just like really quickly tell what kind of services that uh you would like what what values um you would give out so how they could um get value from mind friend and also how they could uh, find out more about it so just like a website maybe or um how do you how do you communicate with with people that would want to come to yes. you yeah yes um basically um the services I'm offering through Mindfriend, first of all, um, it's uh, mindfulness courses. Um, so it's four or six or eight week courses. Um, and I'm also uh, making uh, corporate talks, so companies which um, would like for their employees to learn about mindfulness, how they can use mindfulness to increase focus mm -hmm. and productivity. And you know the general employees' well-being, you know, which is very important to have good results. Um, I also do group uh, meditations, which I'm going to start doing perhaps even online soon, um, okay. and and locally. And I also do individual sessions. So I do individual sessions with individually one-on-one -on -one, uh, with uh, people locally, but I also do um, online, you know, Skype individual sessions for people who would like to and learn more about their own patterns of behavior and how can them how can they how they can become aware of it and be able to work with it and um, with regards to being contacted um my email address i will leave it with you as well yeah. it's uh, info at wayne carwana dot com um carwana is c-a-r-u-a-n-a dot -A -A com so info at wayne carwana dot com and I also have my um, uh, Facebook page, um, which is uh, Peaceful Mind, Joyful Life. And I'm currently waiting for Facebook to change the name <laughs> <laughs> to, to my because it's a lengthy process, yeah. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> is um, it that hard? And, and right now, I'm actually, uh, just uh, these past few days, I've been meeting with uh, uh, the web designer. So I'm right at the cusp of... Uh, issuing out my uh, website uh, soon enough so I can't wait to to, uh, to do that yeah. and have a more online presence as well rather than just locally 
and um, you'll be able to reach so many more people when when you're online it's like I, I, I recently met this graphic designer and he was like if you're not online you don't exist <laughs> which in today's world it, it, it is like that that like you go from kind of 20, 20 people knowing about you and to, to thousands it's crazy <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And in fact, this is uh, the, the right time for me to do it because I wanted to explore whatever I'm doing. And now I feel so certain that this is uh, the right path. And like I felt in the beginning, that uh, I can't wait to grow and, and have a stronger, line online, stronger online presence. Yeah. Like even on Instagram, it's Wayne Caruana underscore. Um, and, you know, go on Twitter, YouTube. Um, uh, the, you, you caught me right at, 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 at a very auspicious time, a very, very auspicious time. <laughs> like right now, it's like the curve was going like this, and now it's going to Amazing. go even more. I can't wait. <laughs> oh, good luck with all of that. So while you're, while you're running uh, Mind Friend, do you do another job alongside it? So Yes, yes. And how, yes, do, how do you find... Um, juggling both of them like splitting your time up and finding the balance between the two okay okay yes of course and the uh, the uh, i do another job i'm a social worker i work with individuals from difficult social backgrounds and uh, we profile them and we train them and most of them have been unemployed for a long time mm -hmm. so we assist them and train them especially and then help them find uh, a stable employment um, um, and it's 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 very it's difficult to it's very difficult to juggle um, uh, two things at once, and you know because when you say yes to something, you have to say no to something else yeah. more often than not. So by saying yes to my own business, my own starting business, I have to say no to other things. You know, perhaps things that were using up my time, yeah. not really productively. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't meet as many friends as I, as I was meeting before, but the quality of friendships have, has improved as well. Yeah, so you learn to prioritize um, as well, prioritize what really exactly, is, means a lot exactly to you. Exactly, you, uh, you have to prioritize. And every Sunday, I spend uh, two uh, two hours approximately. The first few times it took me three hours, but it uh, takes me one or two hours to plan uh, the whole week. And I use the seven habits system. So I use the seven habits uh, of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. Um, and there's a, in, in habits three, there's a way of how you can specify your roles, specify all the tasks that you have to do. If they are urgent and important or urgent. Uh, or not urgent, but they are still important, for example. And I prioritize and I follow that plan. And if someone tells me, Wayne, uh, we are going there and there, there, if I would have done everything that day, uh, 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 like a miracle or something, then I would go. Yeah. If not, I would say no. Yeah. Because the, the business, and uh, it's not just the business, the, the goal that I'm going for, is much more important than the instant gratification that I'm going to get from just going for a drink. And that, but it's still important, you know. I meet with friends, you know. I play guitar with my friends, and uh, you know. It's a balance. You know, it's balance, and 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 I still train, and uh, I think it's very important. But if you're juggling, and if you find it difficult, and you think, oh my God, I can do this, don't just give up on the thing that you just created assess and analyze where your time is going. Is it really because of the business or is it because you're watching Game of Thrones and uh, Suits and uh, you know a lot of series and spending two hours on Facebook every day? Yeah. Because those two hours you can use them for your business or you can use them to work out or meditate or you know uh, and then you can say okay uh, then if you want to change your full-time job to a part-time and focus more on your business yeah. why not? But and yeah. you'll be doing that from a place of, of more awareness of yourself and of your time. Yeah, and kind of spend more of your time and energy on something that answers the question, will this be help? Will my future self be thanking me for doing this thing? Because yes. watching, uh, watching uh, 
take me out on a date, the TV show, what was it, First Dates, <laughs> it's, your future self will probably not thank you very much for that, <laughs> and, uh, apart from very, very small circumstances. <laughs> on that note, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong uh, with uh, you know doing all these things and relaxing, but as long as the time is allocated and used well, and not that time becoming counterproductive to what you really want to do, because yeah. what you really want to do is in here. Then when challenges come along, um, you get questions. Always remember, as you said, what, um, your future self. Where do you want to be five years from now, or, or two years from now, or ten years from now? You know, how do you want to be remembered if you only have three days to live? What you would want to be doing yeah. right now? <laughs> on that note, on a, uh, as a very final point, do you have like one final bit of advice that, uh, that you would give to people wanting to um, get, get to where you are in, uh, in your business? So if they were wanting to be a mindfulness coach and they were like, and they're at the very first stage, what bit of what one bit of advice would you give them? First of all, to I know it's a cliche, but first of all, to believe in yourself, to believe in your skills. If some people or throughout your life you've noticed that you have certain skills, know that you can use them to become a professional in them. You know, to be, to, to to make your profession in it and be able to be of service perhaps to others but also make a living and a comfortable living as well if you want to yeah. and with mindfulness the important thing is to start meditating from now to start searching within you know like even uh, apart mindfulness I'm studying therapy so I'm doing therapy with myself and professionally as well so I can keep on learning and absorbing and learning and absorbing but most of all like I said before, to start, um, I use uh, my mind analyzes everything. You know, I, I think of eight different scenarios. If someone, does, I think of eight different scenarios right away. But sometimes there's a paralysis by analysis. So don't let all the minor things paralyze you or keep you back from doing it. And just one more tip, which I really believe in, because I really believe in. In, 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 in growing and self-growth. It's going to be tough. There will be times where you will be frustrated, incredibly uncomfortable, tired, tears will roll down your eyes, but always remember that all that you are doing, all this overwhelmingness, all this struggle, will make you grow. Because if you go to the gym, you know, you can sit down for six months, but you're not going to feel better and your muscles are not going to be toned and grow. Um, but if someone is going through that struggle, going through that pain, that perhaps uh, uncomfortability, you know, that unease, that will help you grow. And the important thing is just to have a bit of a support circle as well, you know, so really friends that you can really, people yeah. that lift you up. People that take you down, you don't need, you can still love them, you can still meet with them if you want to, but people that take you down, keep you down, no. Yeah. People that lift you up, people that make you better, yeah. that make you, that challenge you. So those things, don't give up, believe in yourself and keep your support circle close and always feed your body and mind with the material that will help you. Yeah, I love that and they're all so true. That's how I see it. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was an amazing interview, and you sound like you have you have loads of potential to even get bigger and bigger. So good luck with everything in the future, and it's been a pleasure interviewing you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much, Alara. Thank you for your time <laughs> and for the opportunity, and you as well. Um, uh, very, very good interview. Very really enjoyed it as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a lovely day in the sunshine. <laughs> Thank you so much and best of luck. Bye, take care. Yes, you too, Alara. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.